welcome everyone to the final week of Ecology Month, aka February 2022. Uh, we started this month off with a bit of a science experiment and we uh, brainstormed up some variables together with all of you. Uh, and then we sent out the worksheet just a few days later. Um, and so today we're going to share some of our results and then talk a little more about what rising sea levels might mean in the future um, and what jobs that might create. So as I was just saying, uh, Sheridan Thompson was our role model this week. She couldn't join us live, so I did pop up her video. Uh, you can find it in sessions and it will go into archives after this week. So if you're watching this, um, we'll say March 4th or later, then you might need to go into the archives instead of sessions to find it. It's just called Research in Northern Regions, the Science of Coastal Change and Community Knowledge. That's my phone ringing. Um, so Sheridan Thompson is a PhD candidate and she has completed every level of her academic career looking at um, climate change and its effects in the world. So in her video, um, she talks about uh, running into polar bears and the coastal erosion of fossils made by possible volcanic eruptions, even here on the island of Newfoundland. And um, now through her PhD, the importance of capturing local knowledge when completing scientific research, which is a, a big push right now um, to really capture what, what locals know in a way that wasn't the norm maybe even 20 years ago. It's now very much that we, we listen to our elders, we listen to indigenous populations, um, because they know the history much more than, than um, we've ever given them credit for before this kind of recent insurgence of, of local knowledge. But with all that said, um, let's see, Fiona did the experiment herself. So let's see, Fiona, um, what we came up with. Well, um, I took some photos along the way. So we'll take a look at those. I was trying to make it an album so it would flow nicely, but my computer decided that was not happening. So while you're getting set up, I'll just say um, with our recent addition of the app within Feedloop, you can now download the, the app Feedloop Go and you can actually put some photos up in the lobby directly. So if you go to the lobby right now, you'll see uh, Bella the cat, and that is a photo taken that Fiona took. So you can actually, instead of just launching the photo booth from there and taking a selfie with your uh, camera, with your with your computer, you can actually take a photo, even, even if you upload it later, you can um, add it through the Feedloop Go app instead of just taking selfies now. So I just yeah. think that's a great addition. Um, if you're using the Feedloop Go app, which is free. Absolutely. So I took a photo of the sheets I printed out and all the materials here to begin with. Um, yeah, so I did experiment one and three. We're just I, seeing your folder. I don't know if you... Oh, really? Okay. One second. This is what I was trying to prevent. <laughs> Stop sharing. I'm going to have to reshare. No. Oh. Hopefully this will work if I'll just share the whole screen after. So yeah, there we go. I took a photo of all the materials and 
just kind of grouped everything together for that. And I can't press next. One second. New share. I see how I can do this. Okay. There we go. There's just the beginning, no ice. <gasps> okay, this is not cooperating with me right now. But that's okay, we'll just do this instead. There we go. Now we can see the whole desktop. And yeah, so measured the ice, of course. Or put the ice in and measured how much was in there. It was about an inch. You can't really see because the little lines on the containers. And then, yep, yeah, I got to make sure they're floating and stuff. I had a little bowl of ice. I made extra ice just in case. There was a side view. This is when the ice is completely melted. And my hypothesis was that it wasn't going to change because the mass of the ice was already in the water and the melting would make no difference and yeah that's I, I put the marks on it after i took the uh second the other photo but yeah it didn't change at all and then i put the dough make a little island put some ice on top and i filled some water up just another about an inch again of water and measured that a little bit less than an inch, actually, sorry. And then I left them there to melt. This is about halfway through. You can see like the, it's all running down into the water. It's, the water level has risen a bit, although I didn't get the side of the container. And then here is the final result at the end. There's actually quite a bit more water in there, significantly more. So that's, oh, and that's, the second one, the same thing happened. So yeah. And my hypothesis for, for that was that it was going to rise because it came off of the the water or off the land and into the water. And then, yeah, we're back to, there you go. I didn't get to do the thermal expansion one because I did not have a lamp to do it with <laughs> or anything warm at all <laughs> to put over it. So yeah. Perfect. Uh, and I just got a question there in the clubhouse, just asking if um, they can email in the pictures of the experiment. And of course, yeah. um, so you can email STEM for girls at wrdc.ca. So I did mention you can put it up in the uh, what's called photo booth photo when you're using a desktop or laptop for that matter, but on the within people go the app on a smartphone or a tablet it's called event feed is that right fiona i think so yeah um so you can post them directly to the event feed slash photo booth or you can email them to stem for girls um at wrdc.ca i'm just uh typing that in for the person who um asked that question so they will have it. Um, that's wonderful. So with that, what I wanted to do today, uh, like I said, a little bit different because we don't have the, the role model here to kind of walk us through things. Um, but what I thought we would do as a continuation of our own kind of uh, experiment of how to, to best engage um, our students, that's you, uh, in in new things, we are going to try a minty meter. So I don't know if you've tried these before, um, but it's going to be a bit of a word cloud. So let me just bring this up here. I just put the link in um, the chat and I'll put it over in the clubhouse chat as well, just so it is easily accessible. I know sometimes when you're looking at Zoom in the clubhouse, it's a little bit awkward. Um, so I'll put it right in the session chat as well. We've just got two of these word clouds. So 
So just put that up and all you have to do is follow that link um, or you can also just go to minty.com and type in a code. So I'll just bring that up. <laughs> Share my screen. This is my first time kind of doing this. So I hope it works out. I hope that uh, everyone likes it, likes the engagement. Um, so this seems like a sort of harsh question, I know. It's, uh, you can see my screen now, hey? Just yeah. Sure, yeah. Just trying to bring this up. Anyway, okay. Uh, sea levels are rising, so what? Uh, and it sounds like a very harsh question, but the, it's a question that we need to ask if we are going to go into a research stream because it's one, we of course want to prove things. Uh, we want to prove that sea levels are rising. So in Fiona's experiment in one that they, they did not, but we understood why they did not because the ice was actually um, the same whether it was at least in this quantity frozen or uh, melted, but when it goes off of the land or Antarctica as a continent or off of Greenland, it uh, goes into the ocean and increases the sea level. So that's one way it increases. And we actually have three ways um, that sea levels are increasing. So that is thermal expansion as water temperatures rise, it does expand. So even in the first experiment, if it was a mass experiment, or you did the one with the lamp, um, then you would have seen a, a rise in the level. And in fact, 50% of sea level rise over the last 25 years is, is said to have been from a warmer ocean water taking up more space. Um, the second way it happens is glacial melt. Um, so warmer summers melting glaciers faster then winter snows can replenish them. And um, this is a re the result is a disparity between ocean evaporation and runoff causing sea level to rise. And the third way is a loss of ice sheets. So this is the other experiment where the meltwater from um, the ground is, is seeping um, beneath the ice sheets and causing ice streams to move more quickly into the sea. So has anyone been able to bring up the Menti? So you go to menti.com right out across the top there and type in that code 37754034. Um, and you just put in like, what, so what? Um, and the question is important because it's one thing to, to say that rising sea levels is happening, um, but why is it important to study this? All right, I'm gonna submit some answers myself now. Yeah, I'd love to make sure it's working. I hope that it is. You don't have to type out all eight. You, I know that there's space there for eight. You can submit one at a time and you'll just have an option to continue to submit one after, after the other. So can cause flooding. Yeah, so the image, I believe you can see some image, if not uh, at least on my screen share on the side there. Um, the green is uh, high, high elevation that's not likely to flood, but all of the blue um, is places that would flood if sea levels rise by 36 inches, which is the extreme um, kind of maximum we expect in a hundred years if we kind of do nothing. Um, but you can see, uh, especially around Europe, it's just every country is affected. I mean, every, uh, every country is affected regardless, but you can see how um, Europe will be, will be below water. 
So a lot of answers coming in now. This is great. So sea levels, sea levels to rise, um, melting water from it kind of gets separated. So apologies if I can't quite follow it. Uh, animals are dying, loss of marine wildlife, uh, flooding, loss of land area, uh, glaciers causing flooding, less people will die, lower lands are flooding, freshwater depleting. Freshwater depleting is a, is a great one. I mean, they're all great, but um, we don't always think of freshwater depleting in South America right now. One of the big issues of the glacier melt and it not returning is that a lot of people are relying on that, that melting glacier for fresh water. So if that glacier doesn't replenish and doesn't replenish enough, then those communities don't actually have fresh drinking water. Um, yeah, this is, this is great. I mean, it's terrible. Of course, it's terrible. But thanks for, for putting in your answers. Some other things um, that come up, if you're interested, the IPC. IPCC, I'm trying to remember what that stands for, but it's the international, comes out of the United Nations. They just released a report this year on um, the effects of climate change around the world. Intergovernmental plan, panel on climate change, is that what it is? There we go, yeah. So um, of course, there's so many researchers out there doing this work, um, but, these issues are going to continue to create jobs ultimately. Um, but some of the other issues that are coming up is just changes in ecosystem structure. I think we've got that covered with a loss of wildlife, um, but that goes across terrestrial, freshwater and ocean, not just marine wildlife. Um, but as things change, we don't know necessarily how how it will affect um, each area. Um, species range shifts in all of those areas as well as, uh, of course, different, like we talked about over, I think it was last week um, with the Ocean Science Center, the green crab, or was that the week before with which Rachel Sippler, if you haven't seen those videos um, that we did with uh, the role models this month, the species range shift, we talked about the green crab being an invasive species, and that is due to changing climate and the warming waters are able to go further um, and take up, take up more area, take up the, the food from other creatures that are naturally occurring there. Uh, changes, impacts on water, scarcity and production. So we talked about that a little bit with uh, South Africa, or sorry, South America. It's probably happening happening in Africa as well. I don't know. Everywhere, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just recently read that article about Chile. Oh. Agricultural crop production is going to be affected. Fishery yields and aquaculture production. Uh, impacts on health and well-being. So we're deep into this right now. Of course, it's not not directly due to climate change necessarily, but we can see that with uh, not not necessarily uh, rising sea levels, but the reason why we have the rising sea levels of global warming, you're going to have more uh, potential infectious diseases, and that goes with the the range as well. So some of insects will carry diseases and if their uh, range increases then those infectious diseases have a larger range as well. Uh, mental health, mental health is a huge one. So Fiona's been working on resources for the mental health wellness, I think it's called wellness resources. Yeah, I put um, mental health slash wellness kind of as an embodiment of all but yeah, there's going to be stuff about stress management and anxiety management and self-care and kind of all, they all interrelate in a way like, as, yeah, it's all anxiety and stress management if it's self-care and vice versa. So. so that'll be in the resource pages in the clubhouse. 
Um, and of course, there's always the uh, the provincial government here has been promoting the breathing room. If anyone ever needs mm -hmm. uh, some support, the breathing room is actually a wonderful place to go. It's a website. We can certainly put that up in in the resources as well. Um, I've been checking it out myself. It's, it's just quite quite a great resource, but it's not. I mean, mental health for everyone across the world um, is affected, of course, by climate change, by rising sea levels. As we talk about these big issues, um, they can be hard to wrap your head around and hard to know what to do about. And of course, there is the flooding of, of cities, um, flood and storm induced damages to coastal areas. So Sheridan Thompson, again, the role model that did our video this week, um, talks about coastal erosion. That's been a big part of her, her research. Um, and that, that changes quite a bit for, for communities and living here on an island, uh, we know that's going to, to have some massive effects. And, and it's not necessarily where the sea levels sit, but as storms happen, where they flood. Um, so one of the big things, one of the jobs that are coming up is uh, climate change mitigation uh, researchers that actually map out flood zones so that they know which communities are a priority to move hospitals, to move fire halls, to um, be able to, to predict areas that what we should no longer be building in. If they're not built in now, we should um, not oh, build. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those sorts of things. And of course, um, well, at that, I think I'll move on to our next, next Mentimeter. Uh, I'll see. Oh, there's a few things. Mass volume and temperature can cause flooding, loss of land, wildlife, frozen viruses. Yeah, I mean, these glaciers have been frozen. The, you know, Antarctica has been frozen forever. I don't know whether that's a, I, I don't have the knowledge on whether that's a real concern, but um, it's certainly very interesting to to think about it and think about the jobs that are around that to to be researching what is in glaciers. Uh, one of the sort of off topic, I guess, but I recently heard that um, as we, as you might know, ivory is a uh, it's illegal to hunt elephants for their ivory tusks. Um, but I say this because there are people who are now digging in glaciers to get the ivory from woolly mammoths. Of course. So that's a thing in the world. Um, but also think of all the all the cool research jobs around that of what's becoming available uh, yeah. that wasn't current wasn't accessible before, and it is unfortunately accessible now. But it still yeah. is a lots of new knowledge comes with the rest yeah <laughs> in many different ways so okay. it's asking for you to change the slide yeah i i wasn't sure how to get to from one slide to the other actually to be quite honest here gave me the option in the beginning to go to the next question and then when i went to look for it just then it was gone oh oh, I don't know. oh maybe because i stopped presenting I'll oh bring it up it's again. Back. yeah there you go okay so everyone can see it again if you're in there i'll share my screen again i thought i had to share the link in order to go to the next slide but apparently on the bottom if you're in the website you can go to the next slide yourself is that accurate so the next slide is well should be on your screen now what jobs do rising sea levels create um and we've got some a person to keep track of uh, the damage to ecosystems to flooding to storm surges affecting animal habitats Lots and lots of research jobs um, out there for for anything in the world. Really, we need we need knowledge before we can do anything about these things, right? Um, and not just prevent. Of course, the ideal situation is that we 
prevent climate change and prevent rising sea levels. Uh, but as an individual and as a uh, idea of what to do with your career, you, you hope to, to influence people to do those things but ultimately you might be looking at mitigation. So that's what I was talking about. Uh, mitigation officers will look at flood areas and risk zones um, to mitigate the risk and um, look at hospitals and say, okay, well, we need to have a plan to move this hospital or rebuild this hospital outside of a flood zone um, in the next 50 years. Um, or as an architect, you might be looking at uh, how to build structures that are uh, more resistant to storm surges, uh, more resistant to flooding, those sorts of things. Ecologists, absolutely ecologists, geologists, yes. Um, so Sheridan Thompson is a, is a geologist looking at um, coastal erosion. And again, you're still going to be talking about mitigation is, okay, so the coast is eroding. How do we prevent that? We need to plant more trees there um, and make sure they're not getting cut down again so that we can protect what re remains to the best of our abilities. Um, or when we talk about green crab um, mitigating their, their um, effects because we cannot at this point get rid of um, the invasive species of green crab. At this point, maybe there, there will be, maybe one of you will come up with a solution, but um, at this point we, we are talking about mitigation. Lots of people coming in here, meteorology, archeologists. Archeologists is a, is a really cool one um, to talk about because there are now, I'm not sure if you're kind of aware of the word triage, but in a med medical scenario, you have, if you're in a, in an avalanche, we'll say, I have a, another, another whole volunteer job as a uh, ski patroller. Um, so my language is around, around avalanches, but if you're in an avalanche, you triage your patients so that your, your greens are uh, walking and, and quite okay, might need some medical care, but they're okay. Um, the yellows are walking wounded and the, the reds need your immediate attention. So in archaeology, to bring this back, um, there's archaeology, archaeology archaeology triage as well um, and it is areas that are being triaged for coastal flooding that they are excavating as quickly as possible because they don't know when that area will be underwater or or disappear as a result of of flooding mm -hmm. um, or storm surges that is because like I said it's not just that sea levels are rising it's as they rise um, major storm events will go yeah. further inland. Um, so both getting there quickly and doing it quickly, because as, as tides come in and in day after day, once you start the excavation of a site, you're opening it up to those tides. Um, so archaeology, archaeologists triage these sites um, in order to, to gain the knowledge there. So really interesting, bit sad but really interesting stuff. Plant scientists, yeah, absolutely. Uh, looking at what plants might offer in terms of solutions, in terms of mitigations. These are jobs that we don't, we might not even have. There are people doing them in some cases. They might not even have the job title, but there are certainly people looking at all these things, but it, Yeah, another one with the plants too would be like the spread of plants, plants growing in regions where they've never grown before. Like if a tropical plant suddenly started sprouting in Newfoundland, that would be concerning. <laughs> yeah, like invasive species and that sort of thing. Oh, someone said, I don't know what the plant scientists are actually called. I think botanists, like botany is the proper term, or horticulture. Horticulturists yeah. as well. I'm not sure what the difference is. 
Yeah, certainly under biology at this point, if you were looking into that sort of thing, I think you'd be headed into um, I think some botany, biology courses. Botany is the study of plants and plant life. And then horticulture is like working with plants and plant life. Yeah. Meteorologists, uh, infectious virus person. So yeah, absolutely. Epidemiologists. So uh, we talked to Dr. Helen Scott back in July and she works for the World Health Organization. Um, so she's certainly, she, she works a lot with uh, maternal health, but epidemiologists, just like Dr. Janice Fitzgerald mm-hmm. um, and others, I mean, she has a whole team, but that epidemiologists study how diseases spread. They are, they're not actually looking at um, the virus themselves necessarily or how the virus um, works. There are people that do that, but epidemiologists are really looking at um, how it spread. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. I hope everyone is enjoying the uh, Minty Meter. It's an experiment all in itself, but I love I love everyone um, engaging. It's neat that it's updating as people enter. Like you can see it kind of transforming as you go. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you can pop into the chat anything at all. Um, as we go here, but obviously the Mentimeter is is where we're at. What else do we have? Climatologists, most certainly. Um, Sustainability would be a big one too, just in general. Environmental engineering, we're going to be dealing with a lot of engineering next month, not necessarily environmental, but um, that is a big one in in Europe, especially. There's a lot happening with um, I won't say for climate change necessarily, but just in Europe, there's a, a lack of land mass to begin with. So they're really looking at engineering um, platforms to 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 expand Europe into the ocean. Uh, especially for things like like solar solar farms and such to to be able to put that somewhere um, and to I mean to do with rising sea levels they are also capturing tidal energy uh, both above and below water which is really neat stuff so yeah engineering if you're looking at sea levels rising engineering is a good place to be as well as, as in a in biology uh, in chemistry in physics in engineering we'd like to talk about how how when you look at a challenge which is climate change which is rising sea levels um, you can tackle that issue from just about any sector so you can be passionate about climate change but that doesn't mean that you need to be a climatologist. There are so many ways to um, work on this issue. Even to get get into tech, I mean, with all of this happening, we need to relay this information to others. Um, So people building websites at this point are important to mitigate climate change in ways that you might not realize. Someone in the chat just asked, how much does the sea level rise each year? And I just popped a quick Google on it because I wasn't sure off the top of my head. And it says, when average over all of the world's ocean, absolute sea level has risen an average of 0.06 inches per year from 1880 to 2013. Since 1993, however, average sea level has risen at a rate of 0.12 0.12 to 0.14 inches per year, roughly twice as fast as long-term trends. So it's speeding up rapidly. 
Yeah, and on your on the worksheet that was sent out, there was a little graph right at the top right, if I recall. Yeah. Um, that kind of shows the exponential um rate yeah. of that. So it kind of like sea levels are rising, kind of a bit flat at the bottom, and then they increase, and then the exponential graph is that they they kind of shoot up. Yeah, um, the same graph is pictured next to what I just read. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we don't really know how much um, it will rise, but according to the Canada's Bedford Institute of Oceanography, um, sea levels are predicted to quickly rise in the 21st century, and uh, those predictions range from a modest 26 centimeters, so just under one foot, to one full meter by 20, 2100. So um, by 2100, I don't know how we'll say that year when that year comes, 2100? 2100 sounds about right. 1900, 1800, yeah, 2100. 2100. <laughs> Going back. <laughs> yeah, um, so I'm looking at the NASA website, it says 26 inches and 65 centimeters. So I don't know if there's... There's a range, here. right? And yeah. it's that we need to kind of be... We need people to be working on this issue, of course. So I don't want to like alarm everyone. And I apologize deeply if um, you- No, we're not trying to scare anybody. This is, it's fine. We, <laughs> we just want to give you, you know, the knowledge um, that there are careers out there about this. So we know from just interacting with uh, many of you that you have environmental sustainability on your radar as a uh, kind of, world concern um and i, I and we interest. wanted yeah uh, a high interest for sure and a lot of people this day and age do uh and we talked about you know what you can do yourself for climate change <clears throat> but one of the biggest things you can do is is contribute to um contribute to mitigation and prevention through your career. So it's not, I mean, by all means, re reduce, reuse, recycle, um, but the kind of big ways that are kind of come, gonna make like big changes in the world are gonna come from professionals in, in a lot of different industries. I'm not here to tell you to, to be a, engineer or an architect or whatever I'm here to tell you that what you're passionate about can um can be a lot of careers so figuring out where your passions really lie and, and digging deep into those things uh, is what's going to to make big changes Absolutely. Yeah. There's no one career that's going to affect it takes everyone someone just asked could medical personnel help with this process of course anyone can help it's going to take all walks of life all kinds everyone in every corner of the world to help the process and yeah yeah to absolutely Some medical professionals i mean medical professionals are going to be needed in you know the kind of worst case scenarios uh where there is flooding um or any any sort of um, issue just to take care of people, but as we talked about, even epidemiologists, epidemiologists don't don't care for individuals. They might like Dr. Janice Fitzgerald was a general practitioner before she was an epidemiologist, um, but she's more or less a politician. I say that very loosely. I don't really mean she's a politician, but she she is a public communicator is her job is to publicly communicate. And that's a big, um, big deal. So she's a medical personnel that doesn't, you know, deal with deal with individuals issues. Um, now, people like I said, the EMT is on the ground of. I don't know, of a tsunami are super important to that community. Absolutely. Of course. And another big thing you can do as well now or in the coming years before, as you figure out your careers, is if there are protests to show up at the protests, it's very important to have bodies, to have people there 
protesting so the governments hear the messages loud and clear like any protest you can get out to if you believe in the cause get do it yeah get and out. voting historically that's the only thing that's made a difference is protests so women got the right to vote that's everything <laughs> Protests, voting, voting with your wallet too, because as things get, like if you. One of the yeah. largest contributors to global, to climate change and global warming right now is fast fashion. So like if you're buying clothes that you're going to wear once and throw out, cotton production is a huge thing. Like it. The production of cotton is one of the top polluters out there. It's huge. It's so if you buy sustainably and buy locally and buy like consciously, that's a huge difference. And not everyone can afford to do that. But if like you want a nice shirt, you can save up a little for a little bit longer to get something that will last you longer. And if you take care of things too, like that's a big one as well. So there's a question there of what type of engineering would be involved in this problem. I'm not sure I could say oh, a type of engineering that is not involved yeah. is, the, is the thing. Everything. Yeah. So we we're talking about um, next month, we'll be talking about uh, robotic engineering and that uh, that is going to be playing a huge part in it. Computer engineering is tied tightly into that. Architectural engineering, of course, will, you know, we need uh, structures that will hold up to storm surges. Um, I talked about tidal, tidal, tidal wave energy. Those sorts of things need engineering. Yeah. Yeah. Someone said thrifting is a big part of doing your part. And that is, it's a good thing to thrift and to reuse something that's been previously loved instead of buying something new to put in a thrift store later. Yeah, definitely. Looking back at the Mentimeter here to see if any, what else has come up. We've got teachers. Teachers are super important. Of course. Without teachers, people aren't aware of what they can do. <laughs> I oh, mean, this is... is. I'm not exactly a teacher, but I feel like I'm contributing to the world just by doing this presentation today because my hopes and dreams are that that um, you are going to go out and and get careers that that make a difference to climate change. So maybe maybe this presentation today uh, will inspire you and maybe it won't, but this is this is why I love my job is, is that I hope that yeah. I'm making a difference in your careers. Absolutely. So if you wanna be a teacher, by all means, this is important work to you. Every little thing is important. It's being aware of what's going on that's the most important and, and taking that into your everyday life and, and educating others is, is very, yeah, well, teachers. Education is, is the ultimate thing. Education will get us everywhere. When people learn and make their little changes, that's that's changing the world. Right. I guess I should um, do a bit of do my gamification code. What shall it be? I'm gonna make it Minty because we had a bit of fun today with Minty. <laughs> Give me a moment to put it up. And everyone who has attended live today, so that's just Menti, M-E-N-T-I. And I'm gonna add it live here while we are still talking and give everyone a chance to ask any other questions, but um, I'm I'm do my best to message all of you there now a code for just being live with us because um, I can't track exactly who um, input it into Menti, but I hope and hope that each of you were able to use that website. Oh, uh, we have another question there. How can skilled trades help with these crises? crises? Well, in the same way everything else can, like 
the engineers are going to design something. They're going to need tradespeople to build it and execute all of the, all of the things. And tradespeople will be important in develop like developing new materials for building and stuff like that as well, because they'll be able to tell what works and have a really important input regarding new building materials and yeah, just of course big time it will definitely help there. as we need to to build those structures we need yeah. the engineers to kind of make the blueprints if you will but we need skilled trades um individuals to to actually build those things so engineers don't do it in silo they kind of make the plan but we still need need the laborers on the ground doing the work too mm -hmm. definitely I have another question. Would you say that there could be a crisis in our near future regarding the sea levels? Uh, well, it's not like we're going to wake up one day and it's going to be completely different. It's it's a slow burn. So like it's going to, in 10 years, it's going to be different than it is today for sure. But it's not necessarily going to happen all at once. It, it, it's going to happen in a way that you'll kind of get used to it happening. And then you'll just like everything else, but it will cause crisis as places for sure. <laughs> Not necessarily in Newfoundland or, or in your backyard, but there's places like, I, I think, I remember reading Miami's very like much at sea level. So they might experience a lot of flooding before it, we would in, in Newfoundland kind of thing. Yeah. It'll happen bit by bit, slowly, <laughs> but it'll happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not it like whether we're going to have a crisis. I mean, we've had a lot of crises. We've had 100 year events twice in 10 years. Yeah. Um, so it's not a. And that's just there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But as a what will be next, we don't know. All we can do is prepare and research and um, just keep our heads up. Yeah. So with that, um, I'm just quickly sending everyone uh, who is currently with us a, a gamification code. Um, so if you're just going to get a one word message right now that's just a gamification code for being with us here live right now it's a quick way because i don't like i said i don't necessarily know whether individuals put in mentimeters um but you're all here with me and that counts you all just got if you didn't just get a uh, message or you need to message me later um, to see what it was or why I sent you that by all means. Um, but with that, I think we're going to wrap things up today. Um, thanks everyone. Ho uh, let me know if you enjoyed the Mentimeter, um, whether we should continue doing similar things. Next month we are doing um, robotics. So we have Valerie Shepard uh, has filmed her own um, experience with the robotics kit so that's going to be published on next monday um, and like i said everything from this month will then be flipped into the archives so if you want to see anything from this month or last month the month before that it's all in the archives um, but come come next monday it will be all about robotics uh, so Valerie Shepard's uh, video, recorded video, will be up on the 7th, but she will be with us live on the 14th. And Jillian Burrow, who's a computer engineer, is joining us for a live session as well. And Robo Girls um, will be joining us this, this coming month and the month after to talk more about coding. Um, there are a bunch of students, engineering students at Memorial um, so if you are in kind of high school at this point, maybe grade 12 going into Memorial potentially, 
then Robo Girls is one of those um, society groups that you can join and kind of have in instant friends. It's it, I highly recommend um, whether you get into Kona or Memorial or anywhere uh, to kind of seek out uh, society groups. They're they're a lot of fun. Um, I did United Nations when I was there. That was fun. I don't know if oh, any cool. if anyone still does like uh model Models united men. nations but that Wonder, was great. i don't know i've heard of that in a long time yeah that's fun everyone says they like the mentimeter so that's good <laughs> good yeah great i love it all awesome. right well thank you everyone take a breath i hope you didn't get too worked up today i know it was a heavy subject but uh it was a subject that you kind of very that important. no one can avoid <laughs> just because you don't talk about it doesn't mean it's not happening so um it's easier to talk about than than to avoid and even better still to to know that there are careers out there where you can make a real difference absolutely with all that said happy monday happy week uh and and we'll see you soon happy monday guys thank you bye, bye.